So one night, this girl Julianne, she's on a flight, and her plane is flying over the Amazon rainforest. And then suddenly, kaboom! A lightning bolt comes down from the sky, and it strikes the wing of the plane. And then the plane's motor and turbines stop, and then the plane starts to nosedive, and everyone screams. Now Julianne, she's only 17. She lives in Peru. She just graduated high school the day before her flight. And she's on that plane with her mother. And they had planned to fly home to be with her dad for Christmas. But as we saw, it got struck by lightning. And poor Julianne is terrified. She's still buckled into her seat as the plane starts coming apart around her. And soon enough, she's no longer even in the plane because the plane is in pieces. And she and her seat are free falling straight toward the ground. And she looks down and she can see the ground get closer and closer. And she's so terrified, she just passes out. And then she and her chair fall about 10,000 feet. And then bang, she slams into the ground. The next morning, she wakes up and she's hurt. She's hurt really bad. She's got a concussion. Her collarbone is broken. She has a deep cut on her leg and a wound on her upper arm. And she can barely see out of one eye because all the capillaries in it had busted. But still, she somehow survived the fall. Supposedly, before she hit the ground, she first fell into the thick foliage of the rainforest, which I guess cushioned her fall. But anyway, she's alive, but her problems are just beginning. I mean, she is miles away from anyone deep in the Amazon, and she keeps blacking out from her concussion, and it takes her half a day before she can even stand up. Plus, she's wearing nothing but a little dress, and she only has one sandal. So she searches around for about a day, and she finds no other survivors. But she does eventually find a creek. So she's following this creek for about three days or so. And it leads her to the river, and there she finds a row of seats from the plane she was on. And strapped to those seats are three passengers who didn't survive. And Julianne doesn't want that to be her fate, so she keeps going. And she walks, and she walks, and then that's when she hears airplanes circling above her. And she looks up with her one good eye, and she sees that the rescue plane. And Julianne does everything she can to get their attention. She's screaming, she's waving, but unfortunately, it's no use. The trees above her are so thick, it's not working. And pretty quickly, the plane stops circling and they leave. And Julianne is just devastated. I mean, she knows the search party has stopped and they'll likely never find her. Oh, but it gets much worse. At some point during all this, a bot fly had laid eggs in the wound on her arm. And now those eggs have hatched beneath her skin and the bot fly larvae are eating a hole in her arm, which I'm sure is super painful and it suggests she's about to lose her arm. But despite all that, Julianne just keeps going. She is not gonna give up. And she continues following the river. And when she gets too tired to walk, she'll like float along the edge of it just to keep the momentum. And six more days go by and she's still out there and she still hasn't seen anyone. And she's exhausted and she's starving and her arm and her other wounds seriously hurt. So at one point she stops and she's just laying on the bank of the river, resting and she drifts off. Then a bit later she wakes up and she sees something in the water. A small boat. A boat had stopped near the edge of the river and there's no one on it, but it suggests that there might be people nearby. So near the boat, she sees a small footpath up a hill and she tries to follow it, but she's so weak, she actually has to crawl up it. And at the top of that hill, she finds a little hut and there aren't any people around or anything and there's no food. I mean, it all looks abandoned, but she does manage to find some diesel fuel and she pours it into the wound on her arm, which kills most of the bot fly larva. So that's nice. But by that point, all that willpower she had been building up is just gone. And she decides there's no point in moving on, so she just sleeps in the hut for the night. Then the next day, she's lying there and she's deciding on whether to move forward or not. And then suddenly, she starts hearing voices from afar. And then out of nowhere, three men emerge from the forest. And these men are looking at her and they are freaked out. Because there's like this skinny little girl in their hut with a bloodshot eye and maggots on her arm. But they're local lumberjacks and they had heard about the plane crashing on the radio. So when Julianne tells them her story, they believe it. Regardless, after 11 days of being lost in the Amazon and surviving a horrible plane crash where she fell out of the plane, Julianne has finally met someone who can help her. And the lumberjacks feed her and they give her first aid for her wounds and they use a canoe to take her to a more populated area so she can get some medical help. And that's all great news. However, later she finds out her mom ultimately didn't survive the plane crash. In fact, no one on that plane did. But she was, however, eventually reunited with her father. And here's what she looked like in real life. This all happened in Peru, so shout out to Peru. 